Just a reminder, you can watch full episodes on my app or join me at JoyceMeyer.org. I'll see you soon. Now, Matthew chapter 5, verse 9 is a wonderful scripture. We're going to look at this together, take a little time and examine it. Blessed. Amplified Bible says, enjoying enviable happiness and spiritually prosperous with life, joy, and satisfaction in God's favor and salvation. Now, get this, regardless of their outward conditions. Now, see, that's really what we're after. Here's why. I cannot and you cannot, and we never will be able to control everything that comes against us. Not all storms are in the forecast. Amen? Not all storms are in the forecast. A lot of things happen suddenly and unexpectedly. And let me tell you something, we need to be prepared. We need to be strong ahead of time and not wait until we're in the midst of a mess, then trying to get strong in God and get prayed up. We need to not get ready, we need to live ready. Amen, Amen. Amen. did anybody hear what I'm saying? We need to live ready. So this scripture says that people that are blessed are those who are happy and they have joy regardless of their outward conditions. And then it goes on to say, blessed are the makers, now watch this, the makers and the maintainers of peace. So we can't just say, well, I wish I had peace. <laughs> oh God, give me peace. He says, be a maker of peace. Be a maintainer of peace. They shall be called, and I love this, doesn't say the children of God, it says the sons of God. See, you, you give privileges to sons and daughters that you can trust who know your heart that you don't give to babies and to children. We're all children of God, but some people honestly never get out of the baby stage. Some never get out of the kindergarten stage. Some never graduate from grade school. They never go on to do anything with their life. They're always complaining and murmuring and upset and unhappy and don't have any peace and don't know who they are in Christ simply because they've never either been taught or they're not willing to go deeper in God. God loves you so much. But his goal is not to give us every single thing we want. If that's what it takes to keep us happy, then we certainly don't have any depth. So I used to be like that. I could be happy when I was getting everything I wanted. Well, that's not any kind of spiritual maturity. That, anybody can do that. You don't need to be saved to do that. So are you willing to take on the role of a peacemaker? Are you willing to be the first one to say, I'm sorry? <laughs> What about even if you don't think it was your fault? Yeah. Now, that's another whole level right there. That's, <laughs> now, nah, we're really going deep. See, I've gotten hungry enough for peace. Now, don't misunderstand me. There are times when you need to make a fuss about things that aren't right, no doubt. I'm not talking about not confronting evil and not standing up against anything. But how many things do we lose our peace over that don't make any sense at all? It just really doesn't make that much difference in the long run. It's not going to matter to us. That's not what we're going to be concerned about on our deathbed, is it? And so I've learned it's that being right is highly overrated. And that it's, you're much better off to just say, look, maybe I'm wrong. I'm sorry. Let's don't fight. Be the peacemaker. And be a maintainer of peace. So we're going to get really practical tonight, and we're going to learn some of the ways that we can do that. But first, let's look at 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 11. Say, we want more peace, but are we willing to make the changes that we need to make in order to have it? And I'm going to ask that question again when I'm sure that you're listening. <laughs> we want more peace. But are we willing to make the changes that we need to make in order to have? Yeah. 
We want more peace. <laughs> but are we willing to make the changes that we need to make to have it? <laughs> See, you finally figured out I was going to keep saying it till you got happy. You know, I found out that I could have more peace in my home if I stopped trying to tell my husband what to do all the time. That's just one little hint of how things can improve. But see, I enjoy telling people what to do. I have a strong type A personality. I'd much rather be in charge and be in control, but it doesn't bring peace. It don't bring peace. And Jesus said, I left you my peace. Stop getting upset. Stop allowing yourself to be upset and disturbed. Another place in the Bible says, hold your peace. Be a maker and a maintainer of peace. We've got to just quit sitting around wishing for things. I wish I had more peace. Well, I wish I had more peace. Well, you know what? You're never going to have more peace if all you do is wish. Remember I said this morning, I have a goal in my heart this year. I feel so strongly about this. I want to help people become on-purpose people rather than passive people who sit around and wait for the right thing to happen. I want to teach people how to do what they need to do on purpose because if we do what we need to do, God will always come up with his side. The blessed part is God's part. He'll bless us. But he says, now you be a maker and a maintainer of peace. How many of you can just think of just a few things right now that if you really, I mean, if you really wanted to, if you would just swallow a little of that pride, be a little less stubborn, <laughs> how many of you can think of just a few things that maybe if you would be willing to do in your home, that maybe, just maybe, you could have a little more peace than what you have now, if you, if you just be a little willing to do, see? Okay, so if you know what you could do, <laughs> and you won't do it, there's only one reason. Peace is not important enough to you. Peace is not important. See, there was a time in my life when peace was not important enough to me for me to make the change. I would have rather been right and been upset all day. <laughs> now, what kind of dumb is that? Let me ask you. I mean, just what brand of dumb is that? And so then I had headaches all the time and I was going to the chiropractor getting my neck adjusted all the time. <laughs> I didn't know how to let people be who they were. I was determined everybody was going to be like me. <laughs> if you are going to live in my house. <laughs> Come on, ladies. Anybody ever had that speech with your kids? If you are going to live in my house, you are going to live by my rules. And we are not going to be messy in this house. <laughs> Except I had two kids that did well to find themselves, let alone any of their belongings. I mean, anybody got something like that? You're just like, you think, what is this kid going to do when they're grown? How can they ever leave home? They will never make it out in society. Well, you know what's really hysterical? Out of those two kids, one of them now is the CEO of our stateside office. And the other one helps take care of me. So all my fits were for nothing. <laughs> they grew up, they survived, and just think all those years of happiness that I missed because I was determined that everybody was going to be like me. <laughs> First Peter 3.11. <laughs> Let him turn away from wickedness and shun it. Let him do right. Let him search for peace, harmony, undisturbedness from fears, agitating passions and moral conflicts, and let him seek it eagerly. <laughs> Do not merely desire peaceful relationships with God, with your fellow man, and with yourself, but pursue and go after them. Oh my gosh, how valuable is that? 
All right, let's put that whole scripture back up again. I want you to look at the strength of some of these words. Let him search for peace. Harmony, undisturbedness from fears, agitating passions of moral conflict. Seek it. Seek means to be willing to sacrifice in order to have, to pursue, to go after with all your strength and all your might. Don't merely want it, but go after it with all your strength. Pursue it and go after it. Now, this is when things begin to get sweet in your life. When you decide, now listen to me, I'm gonna be peaceful on purpose. Amen. I'm not gonna wait for my circumstances to make me peaceful. I'm not gonna wait for everybody to do what I want them to do to be peaceful. I'm not gonna wait till there's no storms in life to be peaceful. Starting tonight, I'm making a new covenant with God that I am gonna be peaceful on purpose. And if it takes me five years of failing and trying again and failing and trying again, I'll repent every time that I lose my peace, but I'm gonna get up and go after it again because I am deciding that I am not willing to live without peace. I will enjoy the life that Jesus died to give me. Want to hear more from Joyce on this topic? We've got you covered. Visit us in the Joyce Meyer app or at joycemeyer.org today.